All right, but let's go ahead and get into it. You know, um, the playoffs, but it's a little bit right around the corner. You know, we got a couple weeks in the regular season. Folks still trying to uh, get higher positioning in the uh, standings. And um, it's been a dog fight. I'm not going to fight. It's been a dog fight. You know, it's going to continue to be a dog fight the last few moments of the regular season. But yeah, I think it's just the perfect time to actually, you know, talk about the uh, teams that, you know, have a chance to make the playoffs and the teams that actually already made the playoffs, right? So let's go ahead and get into it. So, first team we're going to talk about, and we're going to start with the Eastern Conference. We're going to go for 1 through 10, that's the Boston Celtics. So, I feel like the only weakness, I feel like the weakness with the Boston Celtics is, I want to say half court offense because they their offense is one of the best in the league. But I feel like that crunch time offense is so like, it just low hanging fruit, dog. Because every time they get into like, well, I would say every time because they have 58 wins, right? But against the team, like I watched, I watched them against the Lakers, I watched them against the Warriors, I watched them against the Hawks twice. It's, it's like their clutch time offense, it just, like, be stagnant at times. Like, none of the looks they generate between J, uh, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are not easy looks whatsoever. Those are not looks that say, oh, dang, they should do a better, better job of defending him in that moment. No, it feels like every time it gets down to a clutch situation, it's always a tough look. Um, they got Christoph Porzingis. He's one of the best post players in the league right now attacking mismatches, and they don't go to him in a clutch like that. Uh, I just don't know why. Maybe because he's really just the same as Jason Taylor and Jalen Brown, really. He's just a, a tall uh, jump shooter who just attacked mismatches just with his post fade. Instead, you know, get deep and deep in the paint. But, yeah, that's really probably my only problem with the, uh, the Celtics. Okay, so next team we're going to talk about, you know, their weakness and stuff like that. It's Milwaukee Bucks. And I feel like their offense the clutch is literally one of the worst in the league still. Now, I don't know what it is, because I just recently saw this game versus the Lakers, right? Literally, okay, besides the second OT, I feel like it went to two OT. The second one, okay, that's understand. Everybody was tired. But we go to like the fourth quarter overtime. Them blowing a 19-point lead in seven minutes is wild to me. Like, they could not generate no type of looks at all. David Lillard, I don't know. He's he's there to offset Giannis in the half court to, like, take games home. He can't do that for some reason. Then if you give Giannis the ball to try to curate the clutch, you see what happens. He travels. He try to run over folks. Or he just gets... Uh, you know, his offense just stalls out against teams that's actually waiting for him in the clutch. So, yeah, I feel like Chris Town offense and chemistry is going to be the main factors, if not the factor, of them not making deep playoff run this year. So, we're going to the next team, and that is the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, I was uh, surprised they uh number three C right now, despite all these injuries and stuff. And what's so crazy now, Donovan Mitchell is getting the injury bug. He just came back from that nose fracture, fracture he just had. And I think a couple weeks prior, I think he uh, got a hamstring or something. So that that's that's crazy. But uh, weakness for them, I feel like they they just I I can't say they don't have star power. They have a star power. I just, or it's not a talent, it's not a talent thing either. I just feel like the weakness for them is going to come down to whether they can handle physicality on the defensive and offensive end, on the defensive end and, and, you know, rebounding wise. Because last year, because they have the same points, right? Last year, they got their lunch money taken. Jerry Allen making quotes saying that uh, he was not, like, up for the moment. Really? That was wild. Evan Moe, he looked like he tried his hardest, but like both of them was getting outmatched by uh, Mitchell Robinson. And I'm not saying Mitchell Robinson is not one of the best rebounders in the league. I'm not saying that at all. But both of y'all are both like close to like seven feet, or if not seven feet, and y'all just look one man just manhandle like that. Then y'all already playing this line though. Y'all already said forget spacing, right? So I'm trying to see like, 
what, what's the use of starting too big if you're not going to be physical on the glass, in my opinion? So, that's going to be the only problem is, is they are they going to handle physicality well? And, and if they can, is there is going to be enough to actually take them home? So, the next team on the list is the New York Knicks. The team, I, you know, they eliminate the Cavs, right? And, um, New York Knicks, I feel like they don't have the star power. I mean, like Brunson, they ain't kind of get out. Jalen Brunson, I feel like he's he's having all NBA season. He could make first team all NBA. Don't get me wrong, he's having a stellar season. But is he gonna be enough to like get you through like rounds and rounds to get you to a deep playoff run? Because listen, um, OG Anobi, like he probably uh, like two three weeks injured elbow. He haven't really been the same, and he would not have been the same. He haven't been on the court. He played like one game since the elbow injury. And he had to sit down again because apparently, uh, the, you know, somebody in the uh, Knicks front office or coaching staff or something like that was like rushing him back and was trying to play him through injury. And um, and they said OG and Obi don't like to play through injury or something like that. So that could be like something to look out for. And uh, you know Tom Thibodeau, he don't care if you like just came back. He's going to play heavy minutes like he did in OG and Obi first game there. So. Yeah, that's that. We gonna see what what happens there, but yeah, that meant the the Knicks just don't have the talent to actually get through deep playoff runs. And the next team we're gonna talk about is the Orlando Magic, bro. They are one of the best defensive teams, despite their defensive slippers, right? They offense is pathetic, though. With like, if it, if it comes down to it, let's say it is the Knicks Magic playoff series. That would be one of the worst hot swords you can imagine. Bro, uh, uh, the, both of these teams, I feel like it's in the same boat, not having as much talent. But I feel like the Knicks, on the at least they got uh, like a shy curry they can actually defer to in moments, tough moments. The Magic, on the other hand, yeah, they got Paolo, but this is like, this is like what, his third season lead? Uh, do, you, do you trust that? Cole Anthony, do you trust that? Like, Franz Wagner, do you trust? Like, they were literally, both of these teams literally have to win games on defense. At least the Knicks have a shot career. The Magic, I don't think they have, like, a legitimate shot career that's actually seasoned enough to actually win playoff, a playoff series. Um, like, they, they, the only thing I can say, they can rely on the defense for so. They need to create turn. They need to get in the fast break, get transition opportunities, and that's how they going to win playoff series because, boy, I, I just don't see them winning a playoff series if their offense is just this bad and their defense is going to slip. They defense needs to be spectacular. They need to create chances in the fast break, uh, I mentioned, and, yeah, just try to do it like that. All right, next team is the Pacers. Now, I'm not gonna hold you. We can get out the way, get out the way real quick, and that is defense. Like their defense is trash. Their defense is pathetic. Um, yes, they have a real protected Miles Turner, but like, and they have like good defenders like Nee Smith and uh, them hard. They gonna try their butts off on defense, but it just feel like as a collective unit, this is not like a good defensive team at, it, it just at all. I feel like, I think they're dead last in like almost every defensive category, bro. Like, you cannot win games like that. I don't see them winning a playoff series if it has to come down to it because we a game with, with just straight offense in a playoff series. I feel like that's like a tough ass, bro. Because it's, in the playoffs, it's going to come down to the half court game. How are you going to dominate in the half court? And if you cannot dominate in the half court, I don't see. Or you can dominate in the half court on offense and defense. I don't see you having a long stay in the playoffs, right? And that is my opinion. So next team we want to talk about is the Miami Heat. Uh, the Miami Heat is pretty interesting. I feel like their weakness is a uh, half court offense. Now, folks say uh, they have court offense is all right, it's just fine. In my opinion, I feel like it's a lot to be desired because, um, like like the la- like last year, it's the same issue. Half court offense. I don't know what it is. Is it play calling? Is them not having a shot career? Like I don't know what it is. Like they have Terry Rose here. Uh, I know uh, Tyler Hero, he's been hurt. He's been unfortunately hurt this season. Uh, Terry Rozier, I think he just came back from injury not too long ago. So, it's like they have, like, the, 
like the necessary like talent to actually you know get through like certain moments in, in a half court city, but I just I just just despise their half court offense, bro. Like it it can it can be a lot better, bro. And maybe it do be a lot better in the playoffs. We never know, right? Next thing we we'll talk about is the Philadelphia Seventy Sixers. Now the Sixers with no Joel B. I feel like that's a weakness, right? That's all I'm at weakness. But now, now what I'm gonna say that's really the only weakness because I like their offense. I really do. And the reason why the offense hasn't been like as great because they don't have like Joel B. That's why they don't that's why the offense look like that. Because guess what? They won the best defensive teams in the league. I feel like they rank fourth in defense. Like you see how they've been holding opponents to like eight points or something like that? That's the Nick Nurse effect, bro. Like Nick Nurse is one of the best defensive coaches. He's he's reaching probably greatest of all time coaches because holding opponents to like certain amount in the, in the in the 2020s is spectacular. Um, he definitely got guys to buy in. Uh, he got a guy from the buy in the buy the buyout market in Kyle Lowry, who he's accustomed to. He you know he coached him in, in Toronto. He got him now. You got you got Kelly Oubre. Um, who, who was he got Nicholas Batum and unfortunately Robert Covington he's been hurt um like he got guys to like actually buy into the system and actually you know fight their butts off on defense and uh you see it translate on the court night in night out and it's just unfortunate that Jordan B is just not on this roster right now so yeah we're gonna see how that goes but I don't see them having a long stay if Jordan B is not healthy y'all now they say he's going to come back in the playoffs but I don't think he's going to come back in the playing situation. And we'll see how that goes. Now, the next thing we'll talk about is the Chicago Bulls. The, man, the Chicago Bulls, dog, is just no. 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 If I have to find out, like, a weakness for them, it's like... I, like, the, the bailout answers everything. But to be honest with you... I feel like if they, if they, okay, so it, it's just so hard. I just don't want to say everything because I feel it's just certain. It just, I just know. I just don't. Okay, how about this? The more the Rose are being one of your top like relying scorers in, in the 2020s because, dog, yes, the more the Rose is one of the best side players maybe of all time, right? But him in the playoffs or or playoffs say. I did not trust him at all. Now, if you now Kobe White, he got you know he gained more experience. You know, you know, trying to be the second guy on a team. But Kobe White though, like I like no, I I just know I just feel like this this team just don't have it. They don't have enough pieces to actually try to actually win a playoff a playing situation and try to go to the play. I just don't think they have enough. The Hawks, um, I'm gonna say defense. I'm gonna say defense. Um, the reason why I say defense, and um, you can say defense is like, I'm mean, gonna say defense and injury because they've been so, they've been having the injury, but like currently Trey Young hurt, Aneka Okongwu hurt, uh, it's a couple other players that've been like actually key contributors on the team, and they've been hurt unfortunately, and um. Yeah, and the defense has been pathetic all season. Yeah, they got guys like Jante and um, DeAndre Hunter, but. The front court defense, like Quinn Capella, he lost uh, like a major step athletically. If anything, he's one of the biggest weaknesses on this team as well because he lost so athletically. You can see it's translating to his play. Certain like stuff, like situations where he just need to dunk the ball. He tried to lay it up and just break that one. He won the worst finishers in the league around the rim, which is bad, especially since he's a rim running big. Like, what's your point? Uh, he get he get a lot of rebounds, but he just can't convert those chances into scores, and that's like that's like detrimental to like an offense that needs like a jolt or something to like actually get this thing going. And uh, that, yeah, let's go around at the uh, Eastern Conference. So let's go ahead and talk about the Western Conference. And you see, the seeds been changing like every every other day. And uh, so far, we guys the number one seed is the Minnesota Timberwolves. I feel like yes, folks gonna say that we this is Cat not being there or being injured. But in my opinion, their weakness is gonna come down to how court offense. Now. 
even when Cat is back, right? They have core offenses definitely like needs to be a lot better because I watched like too many games this season and it has to come down to clutch situations and it's just like very like it's just like appalling to me, bro. Because in the Edwards, he do way too much in the clutch, way too much, and sometimes he do like way too well in the clutch. Like it's it's like a seesaw battle with him because. I feel like where he, where his moments where he need to push the pedal, he don't push the pedal. Then when he pushes the pedal, he oh he like he just uh just put his whole foot down the uh gas and just go way too like fast in certain situations. It's like I just don't trust this team and how could say. And if the games are close, like I feel like their defense is great enough that it's going to like help like subside their offensive their half court offensive struggles, but. You can't just keep around the defense because you you yourself have to create an offense to actually keep uh you know the opposing team at bay. Because at one point, if a, if the opposing team scores, now you just have to like create something out of a hat, and now now you just you know turn the ball over, breaking shots. It's like this is what I'm talking about. It's the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now I feel like their biggest weakness is physicality and strength. Now. Yes, the metrics on both sides of the ball, offense and defense, is like they are like top ten in both categories. Because I feel like they like they get the hands in the passing lanes, they disrupt things, like they do things like to make them a good defense. It's just like like it's gonna come down to Chet Holmgren how he's going to hit and handle like physical bigs. Like it's going to be matches where he's going to have to be like in the helper spot, and they're going to have to look like J Dub or somebody be the post up defender or something on a Jokic or an AD or something like that, or a Kendrick Williams, for example, put him on AD or a Jokic and let Chet Holmgren try to help out because I don't think it's going to go well for uh, those big dog. I mean, I said those big for him, dog, because. It's definitely it's definitely gonna be a work in progress because I feel like that's really their only weakness. I feel like in their roster, like they have a good side career, they have a secondary star in J Dub or a secondary up and coming star. But I said, no, well, he's like an all star caliber player. That's why I say right, all star caliber player J Dub, and then uh, you got good role players such as uh, Kendrick Williams, Lou Dort, um, Isaiah Joe. Like, you have good role players on this team. It's just like, I don't know, man. We're we going to see how, we, how how they fare in the playoffs. And th- and this team won a championship last year. That's the different nuggets. And I feel like their weakness is the bench. Now, folks going to say they bench is, like, good good enough that's going to, uh, you know, help the non Jokic bench. And I feel like, I don't know if that's going to be the case. Um, Like, because really, I like the New York Jets. This it's been rough. It's been rough this year, bro. Uh, I'm not like all. all this is like quite obvious. You gonna take off your best player. That's what's gonna happen. But it should be bad to a point. Where Jokic have to come in early in games, and like situations where the Nuggets bench literally cost them. Like they would have like a maybe like a five to like ten point lead. They would lose that lead you know, instant. Mike Malone have to call timeout, and I feel like their bench unit also struggles in rebound situations. Like Zeke Naji, if they play him, it's not gonna go well. Like they maybe have to go back to the Aaron Gordon at five minutes, like they did last year, or Jeff Green at the five one and two. But I don't think they have the personnel to actually do that this year. But we gonna see. They might pull it out. Uh, DeAndre Jordan, I feel like he, yeah, he's a good rebounder. He, like he's he's very fit for that role. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna keep saying that. Then Zeke Naji as the backup big, and um, we'll see how the Nuggets bench uh, fares in the playoffs. Next team I'm gonna talk about is the Clippers. The Clippers, I'm not gonna say half court offense because they they half court offense is just fine to me. But none of the, oh, they fall in line with the with the Boston Celtics. Is their clutch time offense? It's like they are generate easy looks, man. Like yeah, Kawhi is one of the best uh, tough shot maker, tough shot takers and makers in the league. Don't get me wrong with that. Folks compare him to NJ with his shot creation and memory ability. I get all that. But none of his looks, you can like, like you can just straight up tell me that they are like good looks. Like they are not good looks. James Harden. 
he definitely don't have the juice like he did. So his looks is going to automatically be tough. Paul George, like, I feel like Clipper fans can attest to this. He dances too much with the ball at times. And then he don't get to rim like he used to. So, yeah, his looks are definitely going to be tough. And then now you just, like, now you just in it in a fight unnecessarily because uh, you just can't, you just don't have the, like, explosive burst to actually make baskets easier on you. But uh, that, that's the, that's the, uh, that's the chips uh, that you draw because um, getting James Harden, you you subside the playmaking, uh, you know, I, I, duties. That, that's the word. The playmaking duties from like Kawhi and Paul George, you you, you subside that. But he's also like another side player that cannot put pressure on the rim. And then Russell Westbrook, he can put pressure on the rim. It is unfortunate like he can't shoot. And then when he do drive to the rim, it's not gonna be a guarantee he makes the layup. So. Yeah, uh, I just, I just don't know about the, uh, the Clippers. And this next thing we're talking about is the Pelicans. Now, the Pelicans, I'm not going to front to you. I, I thought this team was going to be a playing team. Now, it's, it's also good that Zion has accepted the role, uh, that, you know, the coach that has given him. Because he talked about early on in the season, maybe, like, I forgot at what point, but they had like a, a like a meeting, you know, the coaching staff and the players and stuff like that, and then just trying to get players to buy into a role. Because a Zion sent you offense, yeah, it's cool in theory, but you like, you basically like icing out other players on the team, and that's why they try. That's why they're trying to get Zion to buy in a role. And I feel like their weakness is going to be. <laughs> I'm going to say it again, half court offense. And if you don't want to hear that excuse or hear that weakness, I'm gonna say rim protection. That's going to, that's the end of the day. Um, I just I just don't see their half court offense like being like potent enough to like get through series. Like yeah, they go like when they going, they going like Trey Murphy splashing, CJ Mur- uh, CJ McCollum like going crazy. You have Brandon Ingram crazy memory, Zion attacking off the catch and stuff. When they own, they own. But it's just come to a point where, like, the offense, like, when it's not, like, clicking on all cylinders and they have to, like, grind it out, uh, yeah, because now you have a point where Zion is trying to get to the lane. It would, it'd be at moments like Zion is Jones Valley should be on the same side of the court, like, at the mid-range area. I'm like, what is this? This is not 1990s or the 2000s. Like, space out a little bit. And, um, it, it, it looked like it relies on valid two. This is like shoot more threes just to like create more space for Zion. But, duh, it's like, man, it's just, it's just tough. It, it, it's tough to look at at times. And their defense, like their rim protection, like their perimeter defense is fine. I'm not going to hold you. Their perimeter defense is just fine. But their rim protection is going to, it's going to get ugly. It is going to be ugly. So, yeah, that's that with the uh, Pelicans. So, let's talk about the Dallas Mavericks. Now, the Dallas Mavericks is so crazy. They was at the AC, now they're at the 16. So, I see like, I feel like their weakness is, is going to be, it's going to come down to role players. Their weakness is probably the role players because yeah, Derrick Jones, he's cool. He's going to hustle for chances on the uh, offense and defensive glass. He's going to do that, but can he make shots? Can P.J. Washington make shots? Like, can these, like, other guys make shots to actually, you know, keep the defense honest and not heavily load their attention on Kyrie and Luka, right? I feel like their bigs is going to be good enough to actually, you know, they're they going to be good. They're going to put up stats. They're going to do what they need to do. But it's going to come down to the other perimeter players on this team to actually keep the defense honest. It's, uh, it's like, it's Tim Hardaway Jr. Is he going to be on? Like, he's been having, like, He's been having a couple of good string of performance, a good performances as of late, but can he keep doing that in the playoffs like he did years prior? We want to see, but yeah, uh, it's gonna come down to role play. I feel like the this is their role players. Uh, so we're gonna talk about them, and we're gonna talk about the Phoenix Suns. Now, the Phoenix Suns, I'm not gonna hold you. I know y'all tired of hearing this. They are the worst clutch time offense in the league, bro. And that is a huge problem when you have three side creators on the team in Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant, and uh, Devin Booker, right? Uh, this this is supposed to be this is supposed to come easy to them, but 
when it get into like a cool situation, it just it's rough. It's rough. Like I feel like their defense is fine when they locked in because if anything, what's so crazy to me, their defense like in the in the clutch is way better than their offense in the clutch, which I did not expect. But yeah, their custom offense is is an eyesore. Uh, everything's just ISO. Then when you ISO, you play into defense hands because now they can roll up their attention and can't Cam Durant pass out of doubles? We'll see. Bradley Bill, he can handle doubles, like, but he don't have the juice and burst like he had once had. Uh, Devin Booker, I just, I don't know what's going on with him. Like, I feel like he's, he's, he's fine. Like, he's good. Like, don't get me wrong. He's great. But it's just like, I don't know, like, I don't know, maybe because having to, like, defer to, like, a Bradley Bill and a Kevin Durant, maybe that's, like, hurting him a little bit, but, no, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. So, the next thing I'll talk about is the Sacramento Kings, and I feel like the problem with them is it's going to come down to defense. Like, they've, they've been a better defensive team compared to last year, don't get me wrong, and they've been, like, and uh, to be honest, the other week, I feel like they've been, like, kind of stagnant, and yeah, they, they just been stagnant. I'm not saying they offense is stagnant. I just feel like they been the same. It's the reason why they're the AC. Like they run the same actions, right? They, they like their offense is free flowing, but they offense the clearly had taken a step back. Um, but I feel like the main corporate of their offense taking a step back is crazy. It's gonna be crazy for me, for, crazy for me to say. The near Fox has not attacked the rim as he should have been this season. I don't I, like he's like he's working out with Steph Curry like year after year trying to get that jump shot right. I feel like he's feeling comfortable with the jump shot. And it's like he's just not attacking the basket like he used to. Like he's still he's like one of the highest marks in the league in driving to basket, but it's not the same as it was even last year. It wasn't. Uh, the monsters of bones. Yeah, he been putting up double doubles. He got fifty one double double streak or fifty plus double double streak. It's like okay, that's impressive. But I don't know, man. It's like defense is gonna come down. It's come, at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to defense. And can they handle like teams in the clutch dominating them like they like they've been? Like, yeah, stagnant in defense is definitely one of the biggest issues I have with the keys because a Sabonis anchor defense is not gonna cut. It. So that's why you have to be a strong offense to actually try offset. But they haven't been a strong offense, so. Yeah, uh, next thing we're talking about is the Los Angeles Lakers, and their problem is defense. Like, it's defense, dog. Yeah, I see like a locked in playoff with Bruin is gonna make this defense even better, but this defense, I just, I just don't trust because listen, listen, we, 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 we tried to, we, we've been experimenting with Williams all season. And I've been documenting this on, on this channel, but. Like, okay, so at the beginning of the year, we started DeAndre Russell, Reeves, Prince, Brown, AD. Okay, so that wasn't a strong enough offensive unit to, like, outside or subside the defense that was, like, going on. Uh, but it, the crazy part about it is we was building the pack during that time. It goes to show you, right? But, yeah, we was building the pack of defense during that time. And the one problem with that line was, like, the uh, rebounding. And the thing with rebounding... If you don't do it, it's going to bite you. Like it did just in that Nuggets series last year, they did, they wasn't physical enough on the boards. They got easily dominated because of that. So, yeah, we we gonna have to do a better job there. But yeah, we went from that line up. Then we just started experimenting on it. It got to a point where cameras, Jerry Vanderbilt, uh, so that's two. LeBron AD, that's four. I forgot who was the fifth person in this lineup. Uh, Tory Prince, I feel like, was in this lineup, too. They experimented with that lineup because they, they see the defense was, like, slipping bad. It was, it was getting worse and worse. And that lineup didn't last too long. It probably lasted maybe two or three games because the offense, like, was so bad. Now, the current lineup with d Rees, Reeves, Rui Hachimura, um, Brian AD, this is their best offensive unit uh, they use so far, and they should have been using more. But you know, uh, Rui Hachimura, he just he had a great start in the preseason. Then he was also hurt. 
um, then his his rebounding, like they they got on Prince for his re- rebounding, but Rui Hachimura is just as bad. Um, and then his his defense is not like good as it should be to like make this lineup work on a consistent basis. And uh, Jared Vanderbilt, he's been hurt, so he can't start either. And Gabe Vincent's been hurt, so he can't start. So it's like it's like they this. This team is not gonna go far if the if the ceiling is like being an offensive juggernaut. I don't think they should be an offensive juggernaut type team because I feel like they need to hang their hat on the defensive end, bro. Because defensive minded teams go far in the playoffs compared to offensive minded teams. And I, I know they got LeBron AD and they have to play two playing scenarios. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough for the Lakers. And yeah, that's why I say biggest weakness is defense. All right, so the final team we're going to be talking about is the Golden State Warriors. And this is so easy. Heavily relying on old vets. That's why they're in the, the seed they're in now. Bro, Steph Curry, he's not the same. You can probably say he's watched. Um, He's putting those two, way too many stinkers. I remember somebody was trying to tell me that Steph Curry was having a bear season with Brun. I'm like... Are we not looking at the same thing? Like, he has more we put uh, six points, eight points. Like, he put, like, a efficient 17 to 10. Like, bro, this is not Chauncey Billups in the 2000s. This is Steph Curry, who is a model of efficiency. And you just see these stinkers. You just go, like, what is going on? Like, you can tell his burst is not the same. He's not as quick as he used to be. It was so crazy. He thought he was in his prime last year. He clearly not. So, that's that. Um, Draymond Green, he get into like fights every other day, and he might get suspended again. This part, you like, you never. He's just a ticking time bomb. You thirty years old and have like a, a emotional outburst like this is wild to me. Okay, wild. Um, so that's that. And uh, I'm trying to see what else. What else? Oh yeah, Clay Thompson. He's he's watched. He's definitely watched. Uh, he's not the same at all. Um, you know, Jonathan Kaminga, he's been stepping up as a since he got playing time. Um, Brent, Brent Przinski, he was showing good promise, but I guess he hit the rookie wall, the rookie wall. So I guess that's that. And that, that and Chris Paul, uh, come off the bench, is that impressive to you? No, not really. So yeah, this team is gonna be in for it. Um, I don't know what's the ceiling for this team. Maybe they lose the first play-in game, or maybe they don't even make the play in general. And I want to give an honorable mention to the, the um, Houston Rockets. Now, I feel like their biggest weakness, I feel like it's going to come down to offensive consistency. Now, Jalen Green, he's having a great stretch of games. Great stretch of games. But is that going to continue when Singun come back into the line? Like, He's shooting 51% of open threes compared to like the 30-some percent he shot open three with St. Google there. So I don't know what's the disconnect there. Uh, you see the ball is like, uh, it's in Jalen Green hands more. And he's not, he's getting free, like, ample opportunity to go to the rim and stuff. Like, he's like, his burst and his handle and stuff is crazy when he's, when he got going. But yeah, I feel offense consistency is going to be the biggest weakness for the Houston Rockets. So yeah. That's all the teams uh, I talked about, their biggest weakness. And, um, yeah, hopefully you guys like this video. Like, comment, subscribe. This is your boy, Trail, and I'm out.